All right. The heck? How is Ola when he writes uh, songs while he's sick? Oh, and I have hiccups. <laughs> Anyways, is that? Yeah. I have an anthrax right now, but I wrote this song anyways. It's kind of slow. Scratch that. Hiya! What's up, everyone? Welcome to Sunday with Ola 173. Damn. How are you doing, Ola? <laughs> oh, hiccups. You know, last week I was at NAM, right? And I thought, like, ah, oh, you know, I'm gonna fist bump everyone. That's gonna be great. I'm not gonna get sick. And I got home this past Monday, you know, feeling okay, you know, a little bit jet lagged, obviously, but there was something in the throat, uh, you know, a little. It's just the weirdness of being, tra you know, traveling and shit like that. But then this past first day, boom! Came like a ton of breaks, holy shit. Maybe I shouldn't have made out with so many people at NAM. But I, you know, I just love all the people. That's what it is. Okay, let me try and get rid of this hiccup real quick. I hate to be complaining, but I think I have a fever right now. But I felt still that, you know, the sun will fall, the sun will fall needs to happen. And then you guys are like, well, Ola, you should take vacation, you know, rest, rest, you know. It's okay to be sick and okay to miss out on the sun will fall. But I say no. I want to make the sun will fall. You know, it's actually, uh, it's actually something I enjoy. I enjoy making the sun will fall, okay? So let me do my shit even if I'm ill. Thank you. All right. Mindfulness. It's all in your head. Everything is just in your head. Gotta be positive, man. Okay, let's go. Positive Ola. Let's go. It's Sunday with Ola. 173. Damn, man. Holy shit. 173. I was actually watching through my list of uh, all the riffs because I, I save all these intro licks uh, and riffs into a folder on my computer. And uh, I just looked it through right now. And it's like, it's, it's just never ending. It's like three riffs times uh, 173. That's a lot of riffs, man. So, insane, actually. Uh, I just reflected a little bit on that yesterday. Anyways, let's head into that news. <laughs> NAM 2024. I mean, we have to talk about NAM. It just happened. And there's a bunch of shit that happened. If you haven't seen, I made a vlog and uh, kind of like a, a boof rundown on my channel. There's two videos. You can watch them. I'll link them up here. Probably going to forget about it, but that's okay. You can probably just search for Ole England vlog. Some bullshit like that. And you'll find it. Anyway, something I didn't find at NAMM was that Dean Guitars had a booth. They had a meeting room that was kind of hidden away. And I didn't get to go there, unfortunately. I, 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 uh, <laughs> Guitar World is saying, Dean Guitar is preparing to come back fighting, and we got an exclusive preview of its killer 2024 lineup, including its new affordable Care King signature, slime green finishes, and serious mid-price metal guitar contenders. Okay, right, you have a couple guitars uh, right here. 
you have the Earwig guitar, you know, the uh, Kerry King guitar right there. They uh, made a cheaper version of that. Instead of $64.99, uh, there's one uh, for $14.99. So that makes a lot of sense. That's usually how it works, you know. You release a, a signature artist model, it's super expensive, and then you, uh, some people will buy that, and then you release a cheaper, cheaper version. An affordable take on the Kerry King Overlord signature guitar, uh, in Battalion Grey, Niles Carl Sanders is getting a new Vengeance V-style 7-string uh, for $15.99. And uh, Mud Veins Greg Trivet, Hate Priest Vane, Wayne Low Sinek, Seven Dust John Conley and Afrex John Dwarfs are also in line for new signature builds. So they have a fair bit of artists left on their roster. So that's good to see. The previously Dimebag associated ML body shape is back. And we saw a great take on that with the Floyd Rose and Maple Top in the firm's trademark slime green finish. Plus a single cut thoroughbred in the same finish. A cheeky nod to the firm wrangles with Gibson, perhaps? Alright, so they have the uh, trans-Brazilian burst right there. They have the, uh, the dive slide right there. But what they're not showing, and something I think is very important to talk about, is that at their booth, they had this. I got this picture sent to me from uh, a credible source, okay? So this is from the Dean Guitars booth right here. And look at this rack of guitars. Okay, take a look, look at this. They have a trans-Brazilian uh, guitar with uh, Floyd Rose. And uh, they have the, the slime that they call it, you know, which is dime slime, obviously. Uh, with a Floyd Rose and, you know, they have the 59 white and black pickup in the neck and probably another, you know, Seymour Duncan pick up in the, in the bridge right there. And then they have a black ML and then this. Black to blue fade. Okay. So they're basically taking the Dimebag guitars on a shelf and removing the Dimebag name. That's basically what it is right here. I know they're allowed to do this. You know, they're allowed to use this and they call it the slime. And, uh, you know, the trans-Brazilian burst. What's Dean's? You know, but it's still like, it's Dimebag's guitars. And this blue to black fade without the lightning bolt. I mean, come on, man. It's a little cheeky in my opinion. And just because you can do it, doesn't mean you should do it. I think this is incredibly low for Dean Guitars. In my opinion, this is my opinion only. You know, I'm not sure what the state of Dean Guitars is right now with all the lawsuits going on and all that. But, uh, why are they doing this? This is just so disrespectful in my opinion disrespectful for dime and the whole dime bag estate come on man you're better than this i would even say that it's a matter of really really bad taste to do something like this but i don't know what the dean guitars people are thinking maybe they're trying to cash grab a little bit and you know it's really it's really terrible for them right now but it's very interesting holy shit we have to talk about mike portner again because mike portner is amazing Okay, I love my partner. Drum Mill, you know, the YouTube channel, that's insane. It's, they, holy shit, Drum Mill has been completely insane these past months, man. They've had like El Estepario, they've had Mike Portner. Dude, they're really, fucking hell, they're pushing it. There's this performance uh, from Mike where he's playing the Dance of Eternity. It probably shouldn't come as a surprise that he knows the song. But I actually met Scott of Drum Mill uh, at the Marriott Bar the last night. And you know, I was basically like, a, oh, oh, oh. I, I completely went up to him like, dude, I love your stuff. I love your channel. It's amazing. We talked a little bit about this Mike Portnoy, uh, that's the attorney. He said that Mike Portnoy, he didn't even practice for the song. He just went up and played it, did it in one take. Hello. This song is so rooted in his system that he can just, uh, he hasn't played it in so long and he can just, you know, f***ing nail it in one take. Holy shit. Go check out Dromeo, and if you haven't subscribed, they have plenty of fucking great material right there. there you, I just want to talk about uh, my partner. I'm very excited about Dream Theater, you know? They're gonna... they're making... Oh shit, there was a news that they're saying that they're starting to write music this month with Dream Theater. Holy shit! Oh, I'm so... I'm so excited. I am actually excited, it's just that it's really tough to be excited while you have a fever and a cold or a flu at the same time. My body hurts, so if I'm really excited, I'm like... Eh. You know, it really hurts my body. <laughs> All right, the only reason why I'm uh, reading this headline is because I thought this was a TMZ uh, article at first, just by reading the headline. Let's read. Rob Zombie reunites with Blasco as longtime bassist. Piggy D leaves the bed. <laughs>
I, I thought that was a TMC headline at first with Piggity, you know, and Blasco. I know of these guys and I know their names. I just thought it was a really funny headline. It's not really that funny, I guess, because uh, there's no word on what happened to Piggity. I mean, what happened to Piggity? Man, P-D-D-D-D-E's, you know? <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's head on. Oh shit, that was actually the news. Okay, something I was extremely unlucky about was uh, when NAM was placed, right? So, uh, during the NAM show, when I was in the US, Kostin Shiriano, the guy who makes most of my artwork for Old England for uh, the Chug project, he's also done like Arch Enemy at the Gates and like, dude, every band out there. He had an exhibition or a gallery set up in Stockholm where I live. It's still going on right now at Gallery 66, but Kostin was there when I wasn't there. I would have loved to meet him because I really think that Costin is an excellent artist. But I was lucky in the sense that Louise took my kids and went to this show and talked a little bit with Costin. So, uh, roll the tape. Or just do like this. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Maybe you can uh, tell tell us your name and what you do. Uh, I'm Costin Kioriano. I'm uh, I'm doing lots of stuff. I'm a graphic designer. Uh, I'm a visual artist, working for many uh, metal bands from all over the world in the last 20 years. Yes. So. Uh, and what do we have here today? This is an anniversary ex exhibition, uh, and because it's in uh, Stockholm, Sweden, I am having so many friends and clients for so many years, like yep. two decades. Uh, I decided to dedicate like 85 percent of this uh, exhibition is rated uh, exclusively to swedish bands okay yeah. and there are some really really personal and uh, non seen before things into this exhibition uh, i can tell you about about yeah. uh, them so yeah. this is what i'm doing animations uh, front covers merge design uh, everything which a musician needs because i'm also a musician and yeah. i I'm doing both things at the yeah. same time. Cool. And uh, what's your website? Just it's uh, twilight13media.com and that's the pseudonym, the name actually of uh, my uh, graphic studio design which <laughs> is celebrating now 20 years of existence. Okay, cool. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> These are all Swedish bands actually on this world. <laughs> When you were a kid, and like when he was a kid, when I was a kid, and like he dreams about the. Holy shit, how about that? Louise stepping up, doing a kick-ass job, and she went to see Costin. Costin is coming back, the gallery is still happening, and I'm gonna go see him later. You know, when... Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> unboxing with Ola, except there's not much of an unboxing because I have it right here in my hand. Look at this. Oh, what could it be that's this small and fits in Ola's... Uh, hands. I have to backtrack a little bit and talk about Nam again. I'm terribly sorry for this. When you go to Nam, you meet tons and tons of incredible people. Okay, uh, some of them want to take take pictures with you. Some of them just want to shake your hand. Some of them give me gifts. Okay, and I did receive a ton, ton, tons of gifts. Uh, T-shirts, uh, vinyl. I have all the shit out there. Okay, I have to drink because now I'm getting excited. 
Uh, one guy came up to me and said, Hola, I want you to have this. He gave me this. Thank God for, for autofocus. So good. My God, okay. Hey! Can I just... Oh. Okay, I received this little asshole right there. What is this? Well, this is one of Dimebag's played guitar picks. It says Pantera, covers from hell on the first side, and it says Diamond Daryl on the other side. And it has the scratches in there, so you know, it doesn't... You don't lose the guitar pick. Dude. Thank you so much. I really fucking appreciate that. People are just way too nice. I don't deserve this. But I'm gonna keep this somewhere uh, by all my other, you know, uh, Dimebag and Vinnie Paul uh, memorabilia, you know. Thank you so much, man. I truly appreciate that. And also, while on the topic of this Nam thing, uh, I did, you know, release my vlog. I talked a little bit about Nam, but I did record a separate take of my thoughts surrounding Nam that we're gonna watch right now. And also I threw in the uh, another part as well where I filmed pics when I came home. Uh, which you you guys might like this because it's very, very cute, obviously. You know, pics becomes really happy when you you come home. Okay, roll the tape. There's a lot of rolling tape today. Okay, let's go. All right, that was a long ass flight, man. <laughs> Holy shit, I had a layover in Copenhagen for five hours. That's a that's a lot of time in Denmark. Saying. But now I'm on the final stretch back home. Can't wait to see pics and the kids and Louise obviously. But I also wanted to reflect a little bit on the Nam show. The Nam show is absolutely different uh, right now. Obviously this was the first time it was opened up for public the, all of the day, so it's never been as crowded. I think Nam right now has a little bit of an identity crisis because, you know, it wants to keep the business there, you know, the business like dealer and distributors and the factories and all that. They want to keep them there, but at the same time, they're trying to make it a public event. So I think, I'm not so sure what, uh, how the future for Nam is going to be, to be honest. And in terms of size, it was still smaller uh, in terms of how many you know, exhibitors there were, and, uh, but a lot of people. So it felt really, really crowded, but I'm not so certain that it will get larger in terms of exhibitors in the coming years. We just have to see. It's almost like it's become the, uh, the YouTuber show now. You know, everyone is there, basically, all the YouTubers, which uh, is fine, you know. 10 years back, it would be like tons of artists, tons of artists there. Uh, not as many this time, obviously because there's not as many exhibitors. Just about to pull up home. I can't wait to see Pix's reaction. It's gonna be good. I'm, uh, I'm so excited. I'm also so tired right now. But uh, yeah, let's go. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Come on, home, though. Come on, home, though. Come on, come on, home. Come on, home. <laughs> How cute was that? That's my dog. I don't destroy my dog either. She's way too amazing. Anyways, guys, that's it for Sunday with Ola. 173 right there. Thank you so much for tuning in for the premiere. And I'm incredibly sorry for the lack of enthusiasm today. I am really happy to make the Sunday with Ola's, but you know, I'm, I'm also running with a fever, fever and a flu. So I'm just a little low, you know. But I still think it's very important to give you guys your daily, Sundaily dose of Swola. Sundaily. Is that a word? I think I just made up a word. Sundaily. Uh, yes. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for watching. If you want to support what we're doing, oldanglandshop.com. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for the patience. And I'll see you soon, okay? Goodbye.